In this video, we're going to look at this new feature that lets you view Power BI files stored in SharePoint or OneDrive for Business. We're going to look at its capabilities and nuances to bear in mind if you start using it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we go over tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. As part of Power BI's May 2024 feature updates, you can now preview Power BI files stored in SharePoint or OneDrive for Business without opening Power BI Desktop. So let's have a look at an example here. Here is a Power BI file that I stored in my SharePoint folder. And let's say I want to preview this report. I want to see what this report is, what is inside it, its different pages. Normally, or in the past, I would need to download this file first, make sure Power BI Desktop is installed in my local machine, and open that file through Power BI Desktop to see what the contents are of this file. However, as of this update, if your file is stored in SharePoint or OneDrive for Business, you can simply click the reports, which will preview your report in a browser without needing to do anything else. So you can click it or right click and preview, which will do the same thing. Uh, but if you click it, as you can see here, here we go. It previews a report that I created in my browser without needing to open up Power BI Desktop at all. This streamlines the user experience, effectively making it easier to preview interactive reports without needing to open a separate application. If you're getting an error like this, it most likely is because this feature is disabled in the admin portal. So you want to make sure that this is enabled first if you need to or if you want to use it. However, when it's released, it's kind of on by default in my tenant, so you shouldn't have any issues with it. But if you do get this issue, it is because it needs to be enabled in the settings. Now, let's have a look at what we can do in this report. So as I mentioned before, it has all of the interactive elements in the report working fully in this browser. So what I mean by that is your interactive elements like tooltips, your slicers, your cross filters, cross highlighting. So pretty much a very similar experience to the Power BI service. The difference comes with the other elements of kind of the reports or the kind of experience. So if you look at the ribbon at the top here, there are a few options that we can choose and use. So for example, if we go to the file option here, you have some options to copy or save as. So creating a new copy of this report online. You have an option to share this file like you would any other files in your SharePoint or OneDrive for Business. Under View, you have a few more options on how you want to view your reports, changing how it's being shown in the actual page itself, change and swap between different contrasts and colors. This is also available in the usual Power BI service experience. You also have access to bookmarks, so it's handy if you have created or set up some bookmarks on your reports and the filter pane if you have set up any filters in this pane. What you'll notice is that beyond these features, there's not much that you can do. Obviously, you can still interact with your reports the normal way, but some of the typical things that you would expect to do when you're in Power BI service, like for example, refreshing this report, setting up alerts, subscriptions, or even editing this file itself is not here as an option. Because one thing to note with this feature is that it's for viewing purposes only. And it's a really important distinction because there's a lot of features that come with it. So you would assume, or rather I would have assumed that there would be a lot more features with this new thing. So for example, in the blog post surrounding the kind of viewing your Power BI files in SharePoint or OneDrive for business, they talked about, you know, like one of the benefits of using files is that you can use the built-in 
version control or version history that are available in these platforms. And in fact, it's one of the solutions that we had previously before the whole GitHub Git integration in Power BI to kind of create versions of your PBIX files. So another thing is the sharing and distribution of your report files. So you have this share button, which you can use. And what you'll notice is that this sharing capability is basically the same as the sharing experience that you have when you're sharing files within these platforms. So you can organize and uh, change who you give access to, what kind of access they have, things like this, but it's on a file level. Now, while all of these things are goods and good alternatives, I would argue that if you do want to set up a solution where you share these files to your clients or somewhere more official, you'd be better off distributing it using the Power BI service, just because it's a lot easier to manage and gives you a lot more control over how you distribute your reports. And I did cover how you can distribute reports a lot easier using Power BI service or org apps in a different video. So if you want to learn more about it, go check it out in those videos. Now let's talk about limitations because there are quite a few of them, but let's start with some of the key ones. At the moment, this feature only works with PBIX files. This is the default file type that you use when you save your reports into a single file. Now, if you use the other file types like the PBIP, the Power BI projects file, you won't be able to open or preview it the same way that you would a PBIX using this feature. Another limitation is that you can only preview Power BI reports below one gigabyte size. Now, your report shouldn't really be this big. So I don't typically come across with Power BI files that are, you know, bigger than one gigabytes. So just to let you know that if you do want to preview and your report has or is more than one gigabyte in terms of file size, you will have to download this report and preview it in Power BI desktop like you normally would. So some of the basic ones that you need to think of is that you need to have read access to the file that you're trying to preview, like any other file actually in these platforms. And one crucial thing is that you need to have a Power BI account with at least a pro license. So this means that if you're a Power BI free user or you don't have a Power BI account at all, you won't be able to preview your reports using this feature. One thing I noticed about the name of this feature is that it doesn't really specify which OneDrive it works on, but it only works for OneDrive for business at the moment. So if you have a personal OneDrive and you're thinking about using this, forget about it, it won't work. And I presume it's because it needs to somehow authenticate your Power BI credentials with is opening this file. So at the moment, just bear that in mind, it only works for OneDrive for business. One last thing that I think is worth mentioning is that if you have reports that use RLS, you can't preview them using this feature. And I presume it's because the this feature, this preview feature can't really apply filters somehow. So you can't open it or preview it using this way. You'll need to open them like you normally would a any other reports. So at its current state, I can see it being very useful within the organization. So when you are sharing Power BI files to your team members, and if you want to quickly preview report files, for example, there are a bunch of other limitations that are good to bear in mind. So if you want to read more about all of them, I'll leave a link to the full blog post covering all of this and more in the description box below. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know a little bit more about this feature, what you can do with it, and some of the limitations that it has if you're thinking about using it. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.